What's happening, all you minties? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for my overview of the Batman and Robin by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason Omnibus. This is the 2023 edition. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back, everybody. So here it finally is the reprint of Batman and Robin by Tomasi and Gleason Omnibus. This is one that came and went. It was restocked really quick, and that restock went. And here is the latest printing. Now, this was supposed to come out in 2022, but hey, it's finally here. So this is technically, I guess, the 2023 version. And before I even look at the previous version, or the previous printing, rather, I did want to showcase how wonderful and wholesome these two books go together. Superman by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason Omnibus. Batman and Robin by Patrick Gleason and Peter Tomasi Omnibus. Yes, I know it. The, I have to give a lot of credit to Patrick Gleason. He co-plotted a lot of the stuff in this book and some of it in here. But I love how that looks. It looks so wonderful and perfect. And look at those spines. Now, if you're the type of person that puts these books on your shelf by creator. Oh, man, this is like a dream come true. Well, I guess it would be. Something like that instead. But for the sake of the video, let's go back to this. Uh, now, I do mine in <laughs> all kinds of orders, so I do not judge anyone for putting books on their shelves in any particular order. If you do them by creator, more power to you. As a matter of fact, I'd love to know if you do or not. I've only met a handful, not physically, just through the internet, met a handful of people that actually put their books by author. And I think that's wonderful. All right. And the back of the books. Look how cute. Cute and wholesome that family looks. Look how dark and brooding the Bat family looks. Uh, now, I'm going to do a quick comparison to the original printing. So, here's the cover right here. And the back. By the way, the original printing had a lot of issues with the way it was packaged. About every copy had a scuff mark, a scratch mark on it. So, if you ended up with some, yeah, you're not alone. So the Batman and Robin, the actual lettering here is a little bit darker than the yellow right there. Not by much, just a little bit. Not even sure if you can tell on the video. And then the back of the book looking identical, honestly, outside of the different ISBN right there because this is a new printing. And again, the yellow is just a little bit darker. Not so much the colors on Batman and Damien down there, but definitely the yellow. Underneath the dust jacket... We have the same image by Patrick Gleason right there of Batman and Robin, the spines, which are identical to the spines on the dust jacket. Um, this actually has a flatter finish to it. The spine does on the original printing right here. It's a little glossier on the words, whereas this has a glossy feel to it. It's a little more curved to the new printing. I'm sure you can tell by the reflection on the light right there. That's something I just noticed, um, but yeah, a little flatter, not not because of <laughs> it's a it's a flat spine or anything, uh, but just seems like it because it's such a big book. And here's what the back of the books look like. I love this image right here. It is so freaking iconic and crazy of what's going on in there. Now, one thing I want to do is take a look at the binding really quick on these. This is the original printing right. This is the original printing right here. And this one was printed in Quebec, the new printing. Also printed at the same printer in Quebec, and both of them, of course, being sewn binding. Now, we're going to crack this book open. We'll do a little bit of comparison here in a bit. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the stories collected in here. There is going to be some minor spoilers talk uh, as to what to read before this, who this character is, their relationship together, so just in case minor spoilers, I'm also putting timestamps in the description of the video. So in case you're just curious about the build of the book in comparison to the original printing over there, then you can just jump ahead over there and maybe check out some of those pictures. I'm not going to go into big, big spoilers or anything. Thank you, all of you that suggested things in my Peter David Hulk Omnibus Volume 2 video because I did a shorter video and people were like, oh, I like the longer videos. But maybe you can make timestamps. So this is something that I call the middle of the road. Uh, I hope it 
makes everybody happy. I know that's impossible with the internet, but anyway, I hope it makes most people happy that, hey, I have the option of doing a shorter view because I can jump around to the different timestamps, or I can just watch the whole thing and listen to Uncanny Omar's amazing voice and ums and uh, because I do that a lot. All right, no scripts here, baby. Let's crack this open and talk about this awesome freaking omnibus. Okay, let's crack this baby open. We have this end paper right here with this image from Patrick Gleason, Batman and Robin by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason Omnibus. And nowhere do you see like 2023 printing or anything like that. You don't really see that until you get to where it's printed and what the printing date is. And it, by the way, it's gonna say 2022. Here are the credits. So you have the story by Peter Tomasi and words by Peter Tomasi, the artwork by Patrick Gleason, uh, Mick Gray providing the inks, and then additional art here. So you have Andy Cooper, Doug Mankey, uh, Tom Wynn, the colorist over here, and the letters and the cover artist. Here's your table of contents. This already identical to the original printing outside of over here where it was printed on 12 9 22. So it was printed in December. And your table of contents showing you exactly what's collected in here, in what order, and with the page numbers. And speaking of page numbers, there are page numbers in this omnibus as opposed to the DC Dark Knight's Metal omnibus. So just uh, rest assured that you do have page numbers here. So this can kind of guide you. Now, I am going to be talking about some minor spoilers. So again, if you want to jump ahead to the comparison... By all means, please do. I hate to spoil anything for anybody. All right, for the people that are still here, minor spoilers. And that's basically telling you what you need to read before this or how this is collected. Because what this collects is the Batman and Robin issues 22, or rather 20 through 22 of the 2011 series. So it's a different time, and I have to talk about this particular time. Then it collects Batman and Robin when it was relaunched in the New 52 era with issues number 0 through 40. And it also collects Batman and Robin annuals number 1 through 3, Robin Rises Omega number 1, Robin Rises Alpha number 1, and then a short story, which I wish they would have collected towards the front, from Secret Origins number 4. So, what you need to know about this is this is during Grant Morrison's run on Batman. And I've done a Batman reading order if you want to go back to that video. But really quickly, what you need to read before this is just pretty much the Battle for the Cow and Batman and Robin by Grant Morrison. You don't need to read about how Bruce Wayne handed the baton over, or rather the cowl over to Dick Grayson um, to become Batman. But these three issues, 20, 21, and 22, from the 2011 series... Uh, carry on that story. Now, there is a card cover, a trade paperback as well. It's called Batman and Robin the White Knight. And that has this story in there. It also has a story by Paul Cornell and Fabian Niciesa. If you want more of a expanded reading experience. But really what you need to read are the previous issues of Batman and Robin by Grant Morrison. So, yes, it is established there that Batman is now Dick Grayson. Because Batman was like, here you go. You can read about that for yourself as to why he did that or how. And Robin is now Damien. Now, I do need to talk about Damien. And again, minor spoilers. But Damien is the son of Batman. Raced by assassins. Assassins. Is that right? No, assassins. Why the hell would I say assassins? Anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about his mother, who his mother is. Even if he has a mother. But he was raised by assassins. And is the son of the world's greatest detective. I still think it's a 6 out of 10 occult detective, but that's just me. Let's not try to cancel Omar. Not today, please. So, the first three issues that are collected in here are a particular story of that era where Dick Grayson is Batman. They're trying to solve uh, this crime that's going around. Somebody's killing off a bunch of people that are related to some supervillains that are, are at Arkham Asylum. And it's an angel, maybe? It's a whole mystery. But let's fast forward to Batman and Robin. So here we kick it off with the first issue. Now, the first issue, we're introduced to a new villain that's going around and killing members of the Batman Incorporated. Do you need to have read Batman Incorporated to enjoy this? Not really, no. There's only a couple more things I'm going to suggest reading before this right here, uh, or during this 
uh, look. I And I hate to take you away from the omnibus, but there are so many important things, that, uh, two of them in particular, that I think you'll benefit by reading two other stories and then coming back to this. So, this is during the time when now Bruce Wayne is back as Batman. Dick Grayson went on to become Dick Grayson Nightwing with the red outfit or the black and red outfit this time around in the new 52 so while the new 52 revamped a lot of stories rebooted a lot of origins like superman and wonder woman batman was kind of left alone batman was kind of like okay sure batman's been batman for five years all the stories that you've been previously reading about the grant morrison stories nightfall no man's land all that stuff already happened now it's crazy that it happened in five years, but according to DC at the time, sure, it happened in five years. And he is getting reacquainted with his son. Now, his son, again, was raised by assassins and has a lot on his writing on his shoulders. You know, he is the prodigal son of Batman. He is the one that one day might inherit the, uh, the actual cow. But I find it really interesting, the dynamic between Batman and Robin at the beginning and then Batman and Robin in the middle and then the end because it changes. And that's what I love about this omnibus. It's so beautiful, this story between father and son. Now, I mentioned somebody going around and killing members of the Batman Incorporated series. That's something that Grant Morrison established during their run of Batman Incorporated. But by now, there's also another series that has started, and that is Batman by Scott Snyder. Now, I think most people will probably say, Bam, Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo is the best thing that happened to Batman. It, I think it brought on a lot of readers. And I appreciated that he was able to build a lot of the new stories on old history, including things that he retconned. Now, there were some retcons I did not agree with, but that's just my take. But for me, it was always this. I love, and maybe because I'm older, I have kids now, and seeing this little a-hole that does not want to be there, that doesn't want, you know, to, to be somebody's sidekick, that thinks he's himself a man, but he's only 12 years old, just talk back to his father, and, you know, it, 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 and you feel like at any moment, he's going to betray Bruce, he's going to turn his back on him, because ever since his first appearance, he was just a troublemaker, he's a troubled child, raised by assassins, didn't really get raised by his father, just met his father, well, according to DC uh years let's see i guess it would only have been about a year before this story took place so he they don't really trust each other even though bruce has to kick in those paternal instincts which don't come natural to him because he lost his mother and father at a young age so it's like hey you have this automatic family that you have to build you have to build a relationship with this kid and also train him to be your sidekick and watch over him but also let him be his own person that's got to be one hell of a task. Again, these are beautiful pieces of art. Again, these are beautiful pieces of art by Patrick Gleason. Now, in my Batman reading order, I, I tell you exactly where to stop reading um, and, and what to read. Now, what I suggest you do is there's an issue in here. It's issue number 16. It's during the... All right, let's just show off a little bit more of this artwork again. Sometimes it's Andy Cooper coming in and helping out. But what I'm going to suggest doing is there's a story in here with issues 15 and 16. Here's some Andy Kubert artwork. Let's get to these stories. So starting here with issue number 15. They're not numbered. I'm sorry. You're going to have to go back to the table of contents to find out where I'm talking about. So if, uh, it's after the annual. So this is um, issue number 15. And that is found in page 438 and 459. So I say go ahead and read issues 15 and 16. It's a tie-in to Death of the Family. It's where the Joker cuts loose and tries to get revenge on the Bat Family. Now, at the end of issue 16 is a huge cliffhanger. Again, this is the New 52 era. In order to fully enjoy what happens, stop reading issue 16. Go to your Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo omnibus. Even if you don't have that, if you have it in trade paperback or you can read it digitally, all you need to read is issue number 17 of that series. Because that is the conclusion to the story that's not in here. It was in the trade paperbacks, because I, I used to have the trade, so I remember. But for some reason, it's not included in here. And that reason is probably due to the page count. It's already a big book. But I did want to stress the fact that you need to read that. Now, after reading issue number 17 of Batman by Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder, come back here to Batman and Robin issue number 17. Read the full issue. 
stop right there. And I promise this is the last time I'm going to mention going back and forth. But do yourself a favor and read Batman or finish reading Batman by Grant Morrison Omnibus Volume 3. Or at least read to issue number 8 of Batman Incorporated, the second series. It's also found in that uh, Batman by Grant Morrison Omnibus Volume 3. After reading that, come back here and read issue 18. And then you're good to go. Because I don't want to spoil that for anybody. Something huge happens in Batman Incorporated and it's not collected here. But the aftermath is collected in here. Now you're going to see some familiar faces through here. You're going to see oh, Doug Mankey, man. Whenever he draws, he loves putting Frankenstein in there. Or Frankenstein's monster. Which I don't mind. Uh, you're going to see some classic Andy Kubert artwork. There are some characters that appear through here. If you've been a big fan of Batman lore for years, you're going to be like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. That is, th th that's a character that doesn't show up until much later, according to Miller. But in here, man. It's it's a good read. Again, it's a relationship between father and son. And deep down inside, that's all it is. That's exactly what it is. This is about a family trying to come back together after a horrible thing that's happened. And then, yeah, sure, throw some superheroes and supervillains in there. Plus, you get Titus. Where's Titus? He's such a cute and good boy. This guy right here, look at that. You get Titus. He's kind of Damien's little sidekick for a while. Uh, you do get some classic villains, but one thing that I think this omnibus is missing that a lot of people probably want and you're used to, especially with Batman, is an overall villain. It is an overall story that ties everything together. Instead, you just get a series of villains that come in here. Uh, you get a lot of special guest stars. You, you do get some of the classic Batman rogue gla uh, gallery in here. But none of them really are a big, big villain throughout these pages. Now, of course, with Damien's legacy, there are some characters that will show up that you expect to show up. Again, that's a little bit of a spoiler, so I'm not going to talk and go into detail about that. Now, the, the Robin story in here is freaking phenomenal. The There's a seven-part story arc that I freaking love that is like makes you question the sanity of Batman and the things he is willing to do. And it, it, it's beautiful. Let me show you one of my favorite scenes. And it happens early. It's not a spoiler. And I mean early. Like the first issue that Peter Tomasi wrote. Now, Peter Tomasi understands the character so much. And he does something so beautiful that I thought, oh, man, this guy gets Batman. I remember when I interviewed him, I told him, this was years ago, that I was kind of hesitant to go into a book, Black Adam being the book, by the way, because... Oh, Peter Tomasi's an editor. What does he know about writing? He's just the guy that looks over people's scripts. Man, was I wrong, because I have enjoyed just about everything he has written. It's so good, and this is no different. So you have the Bad Family. You have Tim Drake. Again, pre-Flashpoint, pre-New 52, when they kind of revamped a lot of these origin stories. I've done a reading order of both Robin and Nightwing, haven't I? Yeah. So anyway, you have Alfred making dinner for them. Uh, you have Damien just kind of standoffish because that's his type of character. He doesn't really fit into this family, or at least in his head. And then Bruce comes in and he's like, okay, guys. And again, this is when Dick Grayson is Robin and Bruce is busy building Batman Incorporated. Okay, let's watch a movie. And the movie that they decide to watch, and even Dick is like, are you sure about this, Bruce? Are you ready for this? The Mark of Zorro. You know how beautiful this is? This, this moment that he's there with his whole family just reclining back. Like he's there with Dick Grace and Tim Drake and Damien. Sorry, that's Tim Drake. This is Damien. And Alfred. This is such a beautiful moment that a lot of people miss, right? Batman is all broody and about getting vengeance for the death of his family. But there are moments like this that make you love and care about the character and immediately connect with him. Whether you have kids or whether you're close to your parents or whether you have a father figure. Like, this is such a, an amazing moment to me that after this, I was like... I, I think he gets Batman. I don't care what ends up happening in this book. I'm going to end up loving it. And damn, I was right. Because this was such a fun read. And I'm glad that he got on and took over Batman and Robin. And then eventually became the head writer for that. And this is why I think, you know, while everybody talks about Batman, Scott Snyder, and Greg Capullo's run, which it is great. And while everybody talks about how wonderful Batman by Grant Morrison's run is, and their run was phenomenal, this to me is what hit. And I loved it. Because I like the relationship in this book between Batman and Robin, all his Robins, especially 
Bruce Wayne and Damian Wayne. Because it, it just hits you right in the feels, man. It hits you right in the feels when the kid that does not want to be loved and you're forcing yourself to, to accept you as the father that he has been lacking for all those years. It's a beautiful moment. All right, let's do a comparison to the first printing. We'll just pick some pages out at random. Talk about the paper quality. And hey, you even get a little bit of uh, Jason Todd in there. The, the forgotten Robin. Actually, before we do a comparison, let's look at some of these extras. So all the way in the back is where you're going to find the variant covers and character designs, the sketches. There's also the uh, actual script in here for a particular story. And it is, I strongly recommend reading that script if you like that story because it does hit you. Uh, the biography on all the creators, including Mick Gray. I love that they put an inker in here. That's big, big, big. Because uh, usually they focus on the writers and the pencilers, and that's about it. Andy Kubert and Doug Mankey being the other big pencilers in this book. Here's what the end paper looks like towards the back. Now, let's... We looked at the binding. Yeah, let's do a comparison. All right, we have the original printing up here and the new printing down here. I am going to have to hold these down towards the beginning just because of how big these, uh, how big, how big these books are. Uh, 1,248 pages is what these books have, each one of these. And because of the end paper they use is so thick, it just kind of tries to close it like a rat trap. And I don't mean to use that word because I know how people think of DC Omni sometimes in the past. No, these are built better. They're, they're thick. And speaking of thick, the paper quality they're using for this compared to the original printing um, honestly feels about the same, if not a little bit slicker. So it is a, it's got a different finish on it. I, I, I wish I was a paper expert. No, no, I don't. No, nobody wishes that. Uh, but this is what it looks like as far as the bleed through from the opposite page. There's very minimal on these white pages. Uh, you can see just a little bit. Again, both LED lights focusing on the book. And let's get to some color here. Let's actually, let's look at the first issue or issue number 20 from the 2011 series. So there's Batman and Robin right there. And the color's just a little bit darker up here. Not sure if that comes through on video or not, but definitely a little bit darker up here. As far as the panels, let's see if that's only for covers. Let's see if. The panels are affected. I'll choose some pages that are non-spoilery for the people that are here from the non-spoiler section. Uh, yeah, so this is definitely a little bit darker than over here. Not necessarily more vibrant, just a little bit darker. And I bet that's got to do with the finish of the paper. This has a little bit of a slick, glossier feel to it than this does. All right, let's get to some pages in the beginning. But non-spoiler pages that have a spread page let me see i think i can think of one okay so this is the way the book lays over towards the beginning with spread pages as this is from issue number 20 of the 2011 uh series so the very first issue so actually it lays over a little bit better with the new printing it's the same printer the it doesn't lay flat up here this does nice and I swear, I open up my Omnis the exact same way. I stretch the spine the exact same way. So let's look at the middle, because you do get more of a gutter curve here than you do here. You still lose a little bit of artwork, but I mean, it's hard to get these perfect without losing any art. Let's look in the middle, showcasing uh, this one being one of my favorite stories right here, but just showcasing the difference here in the way that it lays over. And... It is laying over a little bit better up there. Now let's look towards the back without finding a page that's spoilery. Can I give you an idea of how the book lays over? It's having a hard time on both copies, but uh, the original one just wants to shut close. The new one will actually kind of sit there, uh, but this is what the spread pages look like. This is from the annual, and yeah, not a big spoiler because that takes place at any given time with Batman and Robin going to the moon, of course. Uh, but that's it. That was the comparison I wanted to do. And that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. 
That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Let me know in the comments down below if you passed up on this book the first time, if you've already read it in trade paperbacks and single issues, if you have the original Omnibus, and if you're going into it completely blind. I hope I was able to kind of give my thoughts on this story and how much it means to me, and so glad that it's finally back in print. So, any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel. But more importantly, everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.